I've become obsessed with Kazimir Malevich lately, with his black squares, and his ability to produce a revolutionary work of art, a political project, the discrete negation of the representational system we call capitalism, the anarchic destruction of the oppressive regimes of beauty and taste, a triumph over criticality, naturalism, a nihilistic non-objectivity, painting for a revolution. His pupil, Anna Lespskaya, recounts his words that he considered black square, an event of such tremendous significance that he could not eat, sleep or drink for a week. So Casimir told her that once he tried to starve himself to death, but he wears only his underwear and dances with his back right up against the pole. He keeps a copy of Silvia Federici's Revolution at Point Zero, Housework Reproduction and the Feminist Struggle, in between his underwear and his jeans, and he spits his gum out of his mouth when they're in the park, and she reaches around and sucks his cock, and the book is right there on his skin. Some people think that trying to starve yourself is trying to find a way to leave the body, but I'm not sure. I think maybe it's a way to be only body, be only thing. Pick at the scab of your Cartesian split. The thing is, I guess, that he knew he was only an image when he danced in his underwear that night. He knew that nobody could touch him, she couldn't touch him. The first time she saw him, he was up against the wall with Dorian, who she was fucking then. Starvation is self-objectification. Celibacy is an aesthetic claim. The whole thing confuses her. Like, are you an image boy? Do you want to be an image boy? Is that the kind of thing you're into? I'm just trying to explain what it felt like to see you in your underwear like that all night, that's all. I heard you because I almost fell off the stage and I scrabbled at your chest like a cat, you said. Confronted with your own sexuality, are you hiding in the depths of your own reflection? I'm sorry, he says. I just have to disconnect for a while staring at the head still bleeding in his hands. Or is this her image you're becoming now? Is this just her projecting onto you, reflecting back at her? Is that why she can't touch you, because you're not real? But when I think of an image, I think of something hard and flat and impenetrable, like a photograph, something fixed. A projection is different though, wavering, unstable. A body in space can disrupt it. Later, when I'm writing this, he comes over to my studio and tries to work it out, and he says that he could dance in his underwear because this for him divorced the act of being in his underwear from all of the other things one might otherwise associate with him being in his underwear. Getting undressed to get dressed. A screen. Casimir then believes that the performance of only dancing in his underwear is an action imbued with a semiotic... Uh, Casimir then believes that the performance of only dancing in his underwear is an action imbued with a semiotic and ontological authority to produce a sign of him dancing in his underwear that is entirely alienated from every other instance of... Oh, fuck. Casimir then believes that the performance of only dancing in his underwear is an action imbued with a semiotic and ontological authority to produce a sign of him dancing in his underwear that is entirely alienated from every other instance. Oh. Oh, that sentence is too long. <sighs> Casimir then believes that the performance of only dancing in his underwear is an action imbued with a semiotic and ontological authority to produce a sign of him dancing in his underwear that is entirely alienated from every other instance of A him getting undressed, b. him in any state of nakedness, skin slides over hip bone, an unexpected mat of hair, c. him dancing, d. a boy getting undressed, e. a boy in any state of nakedness, etc. He wants to be a floating signifier, the sign detached from any sense of a real that might precede it, the simulacrum, which bears no relation to any reality whatever, other than itself. An image neutered from materiality, a panicked production of the real, freed from the chains of a grappling, desperate outside. Have you escaped aboutness, boy? Or is that all that you are? In apprehending this image you, she is faced with two choices. Either she does not believe it, she mistakes the image you for flesh you, and I know I am no longer part of your world. Or she accepts this image exists with no relation to another, and apprehends it in and only in itself 
and I know that this image has murdered its referent, you. Either way, I can only cry and scream and attack it. Meanwhile, Dorian understands that the cast of his image is himself. So accurate is her portrait in its likeness, it is at once a testament to his youth and to its absolute pastness. In documenting so decisively the present state of boyhood, the portrait tells him that he can never again exist as he does now. Pansexual Dorian, murderous Dorian, perfectly beautiful Dorian. Years before he slices open the blood-stained image, the painting will kill him first. Malovic also wants to kill art, so it makes sense that he would produce an image that murders her reference. In burning a corpse, we obtain one gram of powder. Accordingly, thousands of graveyards could be accommodated on a single chemist's shelf. The aim of this pharmacy will be the same. Even if people will examine the powder from Rubens and all his art, a mass of ideas will arise in people and will be often more alive than the actual representation and take up less room, he says. In Russia in 1915, there is a genuine belief that the world might see the end of money, exchange with our currency, work with our buses, a collapse of belief in the sign. But the Union still had leaders, and the state still regulates. Malovic still has students like Anna, followers, still speaks for his movement, maintaining the representative function. Why would you be so sexy, Casimir, if you weren't always the one in control? Black Square is an imaging of the collapse of capitalism, the collapse of money, collapse of the sign. The painting, the many versions of the painting, is revolutionary because it is not critical, not about anything, not of anything else, real. But then how is a black square not pure sign or hysterical contingency? Just the ending and the progressive crawl of modernity as it moves away from things, but also away from materiality, the human, the real. If a sign has no referent, is it still a sign? If I do that again. If a sign has no referent, is it still a sign? Are we back in the club with the floating signifiers, sleeping with ghost things, fucking the undead? Sure, Kaz, you might accuse her of objective... Sorry. Sure, Kaz, you might accuse her of objectifying you, but let's be honest, you did it to yourself. And why not? Is it really that much of a confusion to mistake relationships between people with relationships between things nowadays? But I'm more than a thing, he says. More than a feeling. More than friends. Aren't I anything more than just material for another fucking story to you? All this excess. I don't know what it looks like. Surplus labour. I imagine some great viscous slimy mass, in excess to language even, abject. I imagine more than, excess, that which transgresses boundaries. I imagine that which is outside of the symbolic to look like the thing of every horror movie, the blob. I imagine abjection to look like Slimer from Ghostbusters. Cindy Sherman's abjection series fails because it is photography. Blood no longer belongs to you the second it leaves your body. Cindy Sherman's abjection series fails because it is photography. I'll do it again. Cindy Sherman's disgust series fails because it is photography. Blood no longer belongs to you the second it leaves your body. The body is the fulcrum of fetishization. <clears throat> the body is the fulcrum of fetishization. Christian Barnard tried unsuccessfully to transplant monkey hearts into the chests of humans. Barnard's first successful cardiac allograft on white dentist Philip Bleiberg caused huge consternation as his donor's heart came from a cape coloured, so the South African state issued an official decree that the foreign body, the heart, the new tumour, would not affect Bleiberg's legal race. He says, I just don't want to be open to anyone. You know what Negrostani says about openness, she replies. He says we keep having the same conversation and then both being more upset about it and it doesn't make any sense to me and his indifference is not really, his silence is the worst thing. Why is it the boys get to be quiet and calm and starving and I try to call him but of course he doesn't pick up and my head fills with bile. 
I find razor blades in his toolbox and I cut myself, but only on the top of my arm because I still need to get the bus back to my house where I think I will cut myself more. I like the blood, blood everywhere. I, I want to be open to everything. I'm already open to everything, but no one ever wants to get in. Maybe it's because of the blood. Blood scares men, especially, I'm told. Maybe if you're opening, it's a bloody axe wound. Blood on my arm when I get home. My plan is to take enough Valium that I can't feel anything and then cut myself badly enough that I have to go to hospital and get stitches and maybe get my stomach pumped from the Valium and then you'll be sorry but you won't be sorry and you'll just feel more scared of me and think I'm more crazy and you will wish you would never fuck me and there's no way to do good writing about cutting not unless you're 15 and you don't yet have the cynicism attached to the action or the nostalgia mediation when I was younger I wrote about cutting as prevalent amongst teenage girls because it is a way for us to simultaneously assert our subjectivity and attack our surfaces maiming the image that was projected onto our exteriors as we were expected to become women that was totally wrong, though. I was only ever doing it to get attention. She pretends not to remember any of the night when she shouted at you all the way home. The night that he was wearing his underwear, just after you slid up against the pole. But she remembers. One, Casimir. This can never be a proper conversation because I'm both the antagonist and the interlocutor. 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 Okay. One, Casimir. This can never be a proper conversation because I'm both the antagonist and the interlocutor. interlocutor. Hmm. One. Casimir. This can never be a proper conversation because I'm both the antagonist and the interlocutor. Interlocutor. One. Casimir. This can never be a proper conversation because I'm both the antagonist and the interlocutor. 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 One, Casimir, this can never be a proper conversation because I'm both the antagonist and the interlocutor. 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 Two, Anna. Sometimes when you don't say anything to me, it feels like I don't exist. Casimir, sometimes when you do talk to me, I feel like I don't exist. Anna, why? She has no idea why. Casimir. Why do you think I'm just a cipher? In her list of markers of sexual objectification, Martha Nussbaum names both fungibility, the treatment of a person as interchangeable with other objects, and violability, the treatment of a person as lacking in boundary integrity, as key markers of the process of objectification. She doesn't understand him. He is everything. She is sobbing. How do you puncture this text to say, no, it is you? It's not Malovic, not Dorian, not you. Chris Krause says that dick and I love dick is every dick. Elevating her life to fiction, she questions the possibilities of the novel form, of language. Dear dick, dear Dorian, dear Malovic, what is semiotics? But she also loves him, leaves her husband for him, is sick, destroys herself, wants him more than anything, writes a book about him. Why is it that no one seems to get that both of these realities are possible? She needs a plot twist, a trap, to come from underneath this narrative and swallow them. She needs him to see that he is so incredibly different from all of the others. 3. She asks him, is this okay? She lies with her head in his lap on the bus ride home. He strokes her shoulder jerkily. Later on, when we talked about this in my studio, he said he definitely didn't use the word cipher, but also wouldn't have used the word sign, because that's too loaded. She looks him deep in the eye and says, you're not interchangeable with other objects. She means it absolutely, but is not sure that he believes her. I say that the picture of Dorian Gray is a book that is ultimately about the violence of representation. It's a book about an evil man, he says. Early on in the book, an actress suicides because Dorian only desires her when she's performing a love story. No, no. It's definitely a book about an evil painting, I reply.